Several people were arrested after reports of a massive gathering. The <laughs> LAPD says more than 100 people were at a party on the roof of the building. Officers respond. I understand this quarantine is very hard for some people, especially the socialists, the ones that go to clubs and all that. But, uh, damn, you guys had it like you guys were really, really bored, huh, man? And uh, call for backup. <clears throat> You could see about 50 officers showed up and several people ran. Officers were seen searching the area. There have been no reports of anyone being hurt. <laughs> And going back to United States, New Jersey's casino beaches and boardwalks closed. So let's take a, a scene from this. Let's take the. Let's see what's up. Sorry. Yes, we know it's closed. Look at that. That kind of looks like Vegas. Not. Mm. Look at that. That's what's happening right here in Calexico too. All the businesses are closed. Like a ghost town, like a zombie movie. It looks like scenes from a zombie movie, huh? And if it doesn't have to be a damn zombie, like it looks, it looks like scenes like like end of the world type style. I'm not saying it's the end of the world. I'm just saying it looks like the scenes like if it would have been end of the world. Look at that. Is that how is that how it looks like in your neighborhood around the city where you live? Comment below. I want to know where you live at and if it looks like this. I really do want to know. All right, I think that's about it. Let's go on to the next video. It's crazy though. It's, it's, it's empty. Everywhere is empty. Everywhere. Everywhere. Okay, and here, um, the state below where I live, Baja California, in Baja County, California South, they bought, uh, uh, I, I don't know how the original name, like the textbook name is, but they bought an oven, you know, for crematorials special for the victims of the COVID-19 see that's pretty scary but then at the same time I mean it's better than having bodies frozen up in trailers left alone like forgotten you know have you guys ever seen like freezers just I think in California they had some too or in United States I forgot where but um this COVID-19 is going to claim a lot of bodies a lot of people are going to die over this people that aren't ready their immune systems uh cancer Freaking um, diabetes, um, 
heart problems, respiratory problems. Like, you know, all those people are more, I'm not going to say, but they're more just like in danger of getting this like if they get this virus like they're more in danger of being being like a fatal type of a sickness so um, that's that man um but when you think about a loss of demand of 20 or 30 million barrels per day in, in april um probably something similar in in may then cutting seven and a half million barrels or if you throw in the other the cuts from, let's say, the US and so on that are forced to cut, um, cuts of 10 million barrels or so, uh, okay, it helps the market to some extent, but, but not much in, in face of so much demand destruction. And that's a bit of hypocrisy, because of course the country put increasing oil production most over the past three to four years has been the US, not, not Saudi Arabia or Russia. But nevertheless, of course, the US has, has a lot of political weight in this, uh, and, and their complaints, I think, were encouraging the Saudis to do a deal that probably the Saudis were, were ready to do anyway. I, I think in the short term, it doesn't make too much difference. Um, probably what's important is longer term, when the world economy starts recovering and, and national economies start ending their lockdown and people get out driving and, and flying again, uh, demand will probably still be well down on where it was last year, but recovering. Uh, and then this enables OPEC to have a little bit more of a controlled glide into uh, to returning to higher demand. Oh, I almost forgot. And I also want to thank this woman right here, Rocio Nale, for stepping up for Mexico and the United States. I also want to thank the United States for being on the right side, being siding with Mexico on this one, because we have, I don't think um, America and Mexico should um, should suffer big time losses because Saudi Arabia and Russia are having a little dispute with oil you know what I mean that's pretty dumb how only because they're fighting the whole world is being affected which has been sort of um underseen during this fog of the COVID-19 so Rocio Nile which is the Mexican um kind of minister for energy was at the first OPEC meeting was trying to was uh trying to negotiate when the world leaders told her that Mexico had to bring their production down by like 10%, 15%. I don't know how how much that was and I really don't know how much barrels that is in in, in precise but that is a lot. See right now they they had 9.8 million of 8 million barrels of production but uh, the United States helped them so they could lower their production only 100,000 barrels. I know no one talks about that, but that's pretty important. Thank you, United States, and thanks to this woman for stepping up for Mexico. Durante la reunión extraordinaria realizada hoy, a través de su cuenta de Twitter, dijo que el acuerdo unánime de los 23... And now we're going to go a little bit more political and on the spying. Check this out. Mm. So there is a man, a U.S. Marine that he was caught with a flash drive with classified information in it in Moscow, Russia. Let's take a look at how this is proceeding in Moscow because this was about nine, ten months ago. I remember fairly what had happened, but I didn't really, um, you know, investigate the topic. But now as this coronavirus has come up, let's see what his lawyer has said. That's the lawyer on the right side. It's a small guy. Well, he's not that small. He's cool. He's cool. He's cool. He's cool like me. <laughs> uh, I right. came here to Moscow with a charge from President Trump to improve the relationship between the United States and Russia, and I'm working hard on that. Uh, this is a problem uh, in our relationship. It's a serious problem. The way Paul has been treated, it's appalling. Right. Whoever doesn't know, oh, I'm sorry. Hopeful that uh, senior officials in the Russian government will accord Paul a fair judicial process, get him the medical treatment he needs, and at a minimum let him call his parents. He hasn't been able to speak to them in 16 months. All right. So most of you guys don't know Paul Willand. I'm going to give you a small, small video of of who he is and a little, little backtrack to what had happened. All right. Let's check it out. Okay. So this was um, when he had the hearing. Uh, which his sentence is still being pending. You know, they're still trying to see whether they're going to give him 20 years because in Russia, spying is like 20 years, something like that. So let's let's see what well, those um, guys that are, you know, transferring. Hi, Paul. How are you? Paul, ABC News. Hi, Paul. How are you? Good. 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 Good.
Hawaii. Oh, damn. They don't even let him talk. Bro, hold on, hold on, hold on. Let's go back. I haven't seen this one. Hold on, I haven't seen. Hi, Paul. How are you? Paul, ABC News. How they are push you? him. Yeah, they push him. Like, keep walking. They pushed him. Like, hey, bro, keep walking. Don't say anything. It's like if they told mm -hmm. him before, he'd like, you know what? When we walk out there, there's a lot of press. Don't say anything. You know what I mean? Because it looks like they pushed him when he was about to talk. So let's go. Um, that's Paul Wellen. He was a U.S. Marine. He got caught in Russia with a flash drive that had sensitive information. I don't know to what it concerns, but that's my man. He's a U.S. Marine. I don't know if it was a covert operations, a black operations, or, secret, you know, secret missions, or I don't know what it is. You know what I mean? But that's Paul Wellen. All right, and that's what I'm gonna just end the video at. Hope you hope I see you guys soon. I'm gonna try to see you about more videos. Till next time. <laughs>